All right, guys. If you're asked to create an IoT project that requires long-distance communication, what would you do? If you use Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, the range will be limited. And if you go with GSM, you'll need a dedicated SIM card and a monthly data plan. However, GSM has the advantage that you can control your project from anywhere in the world. But what if you don't need worldwide connectivity, just a range of a few hundred meters to 10 kilometers? In that case, you can use a radio frequency module. There are many RF modules available in the market that claim a range of up to 10 kilometers. I have the HC12 module, which I ordered to build an RC car controller. Today, we'll set up a long-distance communication system. With this module, we'll control two LEDs and adjust the brightness of one LED. The HC12 module is easy to interface with Arduino. It connects directly to RXTX pins without requiring any third-party libraries. Using 433 MHz RFs, it can send and receive data up to one kilonobit, no Wi-Fi or internet required. Let's check the pinouts. The HC12 module has five pins, VCC, GND, RXD, TXD, SET. The SET pin is used to configure the HC12 module, such as setting the board rate, address and frequency. In this video, we won't cover the configuration part. We'll use default settings to start communication. Wiring the HC12 module with Arduino, HC12 VCC, Arduino 3.3 volts, HC12 GND, Arduino GND. We'll use the software serial library, HC12 RXD, Arduino Digital Pin 3, HC12 TXD, Arduino Digital Pin 2. We need to set up two modules, one as a sender, one as a receiver. Uploading the Arduino code. On the sender module, we'll upload a sketch that, sets that sends whatever text we type in the serial monitor to the receiver. On the receiver module, we'll upload a sketch that prints the incoming data on the serial monitor. The sender is connected to COM3. The receiver is connected to COM8. After uploading the code to both modules, we'll open the serial monitor for both sender and receiver. Set the board rate to 9600. On the sender side, type a message and send it Dake. You can see that I sent hello, and it was received successfully on the receiver. So this is how you can send and receive integers, strings, numbers or characters using the HC12 module. All right, now we'll add more features to this code. On the sender side, we'll have two buttons and one potentiometer. On the receiver side, we'll connect three LEDs. By pressing a button on the sender, we'll turn LEDs on and off on the receiver side. By adjusting the potentiometer, we'll control the brightness of an LED on the receiver side. Let's check the connections. On the sender side, we'll connect the potentiometer to A0. The VCC pin of the potentiometer goes to 5 volts. The GND pin connects to GND. We'll also use two push buttons. They will be connected to GPIO pins 5 and 6. On the receiver side, we'll connect four LEDs. One for signal indication. One for brightness control via potentiometer. B2 for control via push buttons. The signal LED is connected to GPIO pin 12. The LED controlled by the potentiometer is connected to D5. The two LEDs controlled by the push buttons are connected to A0 and A5. I've made the necessary updates to both the sender and receiver codes. I've placed both codes side by side for better understanding. Before uploading the code, let's walk through both programs. After that, we'll upload the code and check the results. First, let's walk through the sender code. First of all, I've included the software serial library and created a software serial instance for HC12. I'm using pins 2 and 3 because I'm using them as RX and TX. On the sender side, I've connected two buttons to GPIO pins 5 and 6, so I've defined them here as well. I've created two Boolean variables, state 1 and state 2, and initialized them to false. I've also created two more Boolean variables to store the last button state and set their initial values to high. Inside the setup function, I've defined pin modes for both buttons as input pull-up. I've initialized the serial monitor at 9600 board rate and also initialized the HC12 serial communication. I've printed a message, sender ready, type a message to send. 
Inside the loop function I've created an integer variable sensor value which stores the analog reading from pin A row. I've then printed this sensor value to the HC12 serial so that it gets sent to the receiver. At the same time I've also printed the same value on the serial monitor. Now let's read the button inputs I've created two boolean variables. Button 1 state, button 2 state. Then, I've read the state of both buttons using digital read and assigned them to these variables. To toggle state 1, I've used an if statement. This condition checks if button 1 was pressed. If the condition is met, state 1 will toggle. If it was true, it will become false. If it was false, it will become true. After toggling, the new state 1 value is sent to HC12 and also printed to the serial monitor. The same method is used for state 2. I've applied the same approach to toggle state 2. After toggling, the new state 2 value is sent to the receiver and printed on the serial monitor. Updating the last button states after checking both buttons, I've updated last button 1 state and last button 2 state with the current button states. The last piece of code. This piece of code reads input from the serial monitor and sends it to the receiver. It also prints the same input on the serial monitor. So that was the sender code. Now let's walk through the receiver code as well. Here too we need to include the software serial library and create an instance of the software serial library for the HC12 module using pin numbers 2 and 3. On the receiver side we will use four LEDs. LED 1, LED 2, LED 3 and one LED for signal indication. So I have defined all four LEDs. Additionally, I have taken two Boolean variables, state 1 and state 2, both initialized to false. For brightness control, I have also taken an integer variable named brightness, initially set to zero. Next, to handle incoming data, I have created some necessary variables. Max length is set to 32. A character array named receive char is declared with a length of 32. A Boolean variable new data is initialized to false. Last receive time is set to zero, and signal timeout is set to 2000 milliseconds. Inside the setup function, the pin mode for all four LEDs is set to output. Initially, all four LEDs are set to low. Both serial monitor and HC12 serial are initialized at a board rate of 9600. A message is printed, receiver ready, waiting for data. Inside the loop function, three functions are used. Receive data, process data, check signal status. The receive data function receives incoming data and stores it in the received char array. The process data function contains necessary conditions to control the LEDs based on received data. Inside process data, if new data is received, the new data state is set to true. So inside process data, if there is new data, the received character array is printed on the serial monitor. The signal LED is turned high. Now we need to use the received data to control the LEDs. Adjust LED brightness and toggle two LEDs. Using an if condition, the analog read A0 value is received, mapped and assigned to brightness. The analog write function is used to set the brightness on LED3. The brightness value is also printed on the serial monitor. Similarly, using an else if condition, the button 1 value is read, assigned to state 1, and LED1 is toggled using the digital write function. The updated state is printed on the serial monitor. Following the same method, the button 2 value is read, assigned to state 2, and LED 2 is toggled. The new state is printed on the serial monitor as well. At the end, new data is updated back to false. Now, let's move to the third function, check signal status. This function basically checks the signal status continuously. If the signal is lost, the signal LED is turned off. Now we can upload both codes. So, let's upload both codes and check the results. After uploading the code, you can see that by pressing the push button on the sender side, I can control both LEDs on the receiver side. By adjusting the potentiometer, I can also control the brightness of the blue LED connected to the receiver. Now let's test the signal LED as well. If I disconnect the power from the sender, the yellow LED on the receiver side turns off. If I power the sender again, the receiver starts receiving the signal and the signal LED turns on. So our setup is working perfectly using the HC12 module. Both Arduino boards are successfully communicating using the HC12 module.
You can use the HC12 module in projects where long distance communication is required. For example, if I connect the receiver to a separate power source or a battery and take it outside, it won't disconnect quickly because HC12 is a long range communication module. With this module, you can build some amazing projects like a drone controller or a remote controlled car. In future videos, we will explore more possibilities. If you don't want to miss them, subscribe to the channel. That's it for this video. If you learned something from this video, give it a like. If you have any doubts, drop a comment. Subscribe to the channel. If you want to talk to me directly, you can DM me on Instagram. See you in the next video. Till then, take care.